Preacher Tom here. It's 2021. We've made the transition to the new CBT format, and it's time to update our mechanical PE exam strategies based on all we've learned. In part one, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the exam itself, and then I'll give you my recommendations on how to decide which exam to take. So let's get started. The mechanical PE exam, or the Principles and Practice of Engineering exam, is administered by the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, or NCEES. Passing the PE examination is a requirement to become a professional engineer in the United States. The PE exam is actually the second exam required, coming after the Fundamentals of Engineering, or FE exam. Most people take the FE exam at the end of their senior year of college, but some wait until later. Either way, you'll need to take and pass the FE before you can take the PE exam. The exams are part of the three E's needed for licensure. Education, that's your college degree. Experience, four years working in engineering under a professional engineer. And exams, the PE and FE exams. Specific education and experience requirements vary by state, but the exams are the same for everyone. At one time, you had to wait until you had met the experience requirement before you could take the PE exam. That is no longer required, but if you pass the PE exam before you have met the experience requirement, you will not receive your PE license until you do. About 3,500 people take the mechanical exams each year. Most are taking it for the first time, but there are always some repeat takers. Pass rates vary from year to year, but first-timers generally fare significantly better on the exam than repeat takers. The three mechanical PE exams are now offered in the year-round computer-based testing, or CBT, format. With CBT exams, you can take the exam on a date you schedule at multiple locations, and you typically get your results in 8 to 10 days. You can also take the exam up to three times in a 12-month period, with some additional restrictions within that period. Knowing in advance what the experience of taking a CBT PE exam will be like is an important consideration because, for many people, what keeps them from passing is the nervousness generated by the exam experience itself and not their lack of understanding or ability to solve problems. You need to be prepared to run the gauntlet calmly. To familiarize yourself with that challenge, I recommend that you watch my videos about the computer-based PE exam experience. I go over the various aspects of how the CBT exam is administered and talk about the impact the format will have on your preparation. And in my Exam Strategies Part 2 video, I detail my exam day recommendations. The most significant challenge with the CBT format is that you will not be allowed any outside references whatsoever. Your only reference during the exam is limited to the provided NCEES PE Mechanical Reference Handbook PDF shown on your computer screen. It is clear that one of the keys to success with this exam format will be familiarity with this handbook and the ability to quickly search and find what you need with ease. With that in mind, I have made that familiarization a priority in our review courses. Another key to success will be addressing the many gaps that exist in the reference handbook. You are going to need to rely on your memory more than ever with this exam. Another focus of our reviews. There are 80 total questions on the exam. The CBT exams have the traditional multiple choice questions, which fall into two types, quantitative problems that you will need to solve, and non-quantitative questions that don't require any calculations. CBT exams also have four additional question types. They are referred to by the NCES as AITs, alternate item types, and they include multiple correct options, point and click, drag and drop, and fill in the blank. You will have eight hours to complete the exam with up to an additional 50 minutes allowed for lunch. I'd like to take a minute to take a closer look at what an 80 question exam means in terms of what it takes to pass this exam. Each question is worth one point, and that's whether it's a complex quantitative problem that takes several minutes to solve, or a simple non-quantitative problem that takes mere seconds to answer. Although NCES doesn't officially reveal what a passing grade is, years of experience have shown us that 70% is probably close to the mark, and we are going to set that as our magic goal. 
That means if you can get 56 questions correct, you should be able to pass the exam. Let's start with that 56-point goal and extrapolate what that means in terms of the effort it takes to pass. Stick with me. This is interesting. Our magic goal is 56 points, but how do we get there? First, we have found that it can take up to 7 hours of review to learn the material needed to get one point on the exam. Some folks can certainly do it in less time, but we've been doing this a while, and this number seems to be consistent. 7 hours times 56 points equals roughly 400 hours. If you put 20 hours into your review each week, that means you need to allow 20 weeks for your preparation. At that rate, you will get 2.8 points per week and reach your goal of 56 points. This calculation is part of the reason we recommend a 20-week review time frame and why we have based our courses on a 20-week schedule. Our courses are self-paced, so we have participants who take more weeks or fewer weeks to complete their reviews, but the one thing that remains constant, you have to be committed to putting in the hours needed to get the points you need to pass. Now it's time to get down to the big decision. Which mechanical PE exam should you take? It's a question that can only be answered by you based on your experience, knowledge, and strengths. But we are going to give you some guidance that will help you choose the best exam for you. First, a word about using pass rates to inform your decision. There are three mechanical PE exams to choose from, HVAC and refrigeration, machine design and materials, and thermal and fluid systems. As you can see from the first full round of pass rates from NCES for the mechanical CBT exam in 2020, HVAC and refrigeration has a much higher pass rate than machine design and materials and thermal and fluid systems. Your first thought on seeing these pass rates might be that HVAC must be the easier exam to pass and I should avoid machine design or thermal fluids. Not so. HVAC is actually the most specialized of the three exams and should not be chosen unless you already have significant knowledge and experience in this area. The right exam for you depends on several factors that I am going to go over next. You need to consider these factors plus your experience and strengths to find the right exam for you. We work hard to help participants in our courses choose the right exam, and it paid off for them in 2020 with DTC pass rates well above the overall national rates. So let's look at what you should be considering so that you can choose the right exam for you. There are four key factors you will need to look at, the nature of your job, your familiarity with the topics on that exam, the diversity of topics found in the specifications for that exam, and your engineering strengths. Let's take a quick look at each of these factors and then we'll apply them to the three mechanical PE exams. The first consideration is the nature of your job. What is the actual work that you are doing each day? Are you actively designing or are you a manager with little day-to-day -day work using engineering design equations? Does your work line up neatly with the specifications of one of the exams? If so, your decision is going to be fairly easy. If not, then you'll need to consider the other factors. The next consideration is your familiarity with the topics on the exam. You should look through the specifications for each exam and determine which topics are familiar to you. This is tied to your work experience, but goes beyond that. What topics do you recall strongly from your college days? For some folks, that may be quite a few topics. If a lot of time has passed, the answer may be zero. This consideration may narrow down your exam choice significantly, but if it doesn't, don't despair. There are other factors to consider. If you're still on the fence, you'll want to consider the diversity of topics on each exam. All exams are not created equal when it comes to the diversity of the topics covered. The exams with more diverse topics are HVAC and refrigeration, and machine design and materials. They both have lots of topics that are distinct from each other and require mastering a number of unrelated equations. So if these are not calculations that you are already familiar with, there is more to learn. The exam with less diverse topics is thermal and fluid systems. The topics on this exam are more interrelated 
so equations and concepts can be applied across more topics. This commonality results in you having less to learn for this exam, especially if you're pretty much learning everything from scratch. The last consideration would be what are your strengths? You might think this consideration should have come sooner, but I believe that if the previous factors direct you away from your perceived strengths, you should probably go in that direction, especially if you take one of our DTC reviews. We've had great success getting folks up to speed for exams they did not perceive as their strong suit. But if you have not already determined a clear choice, then definitely consider which topics came more easily to you in college and that you feel you have a better ability to grasp. With all that in mind, let's take a look at how those considerations apply to each of the mechanical PE exams. If you're considering the HVAC and refrigeration exam, look at the nature of your job. If you are actively designing HVAC and refrigeration components, not just selecting those components, HVAC is your best choice. For example, if you are designing cooling towers, not just selecting a cooling tower for a particular application. Also, if you have a copy of the ASHRAE Fundamentals Manual on your desk, in your car, and by your bed, that's a very good sign that the HVAC exam is your best choice. If the specifications for this exam are also very familiar to you, then HVAC is your exam. If not, choose the Thermal and Fluid Systems exam. When you look at the diversity of topics for the HVAC exam, that becomes even more clear. While there are a few thermal topics you don't need for the HVAC exam, you do need to master more overall topics for HVAC. So, if your HVAC experience is not strong, the thermal and fluids exam will give you fewer topics to review. For the machine design and materials exam, if the nature of your job has you actively working in the design of mechanical components, the machine design and materials may be your best choice. Also, if you have a copy of Shigley's Mechanical Engineering Design, or an equivalent, open on your desk, that's a very good sign that machine design and materials may be your best choice. Again, if the specifications for this exam were also very familiar to you, then machine design and materials is your exam. If not, then choose the Thermal and Fluid Systems exam. Machine Design and Materials has the most diversity of topics, many unrelated to each other. So, if your mechanical design experience is not strong, the Thermal and Fluids exam will give you fewer topics to review. I've already listed the Thermal and Fluids exam as the default choice. Well, that's because the Thermal and Fluid Systems exam doesn't require familiarity with any particular reference and has the least diversity of topics, most of which are related to each other. But the thermal and fluids exam may be your first choice, depending on the nature of your job. If you are actively working in the design and selection of thermal and fluid systems components, and the topics in the specifications are very familiar, the thermal and fluid systems exam is your best choice. And it has the added bonus of having the least number of topics to master. Hopefully, at this point, one of the three mechanical exams is an obvious choice. If so, dive in with confidence that you've chosen the right exam for you. Perhaps you've narrowed your choices down to two of the exams, but are having a tough time making that final decision. You may need to test your strengths to help you make your decision. One way to find out which exam will match up best with your strengths is to purchase the NCES practice exams for the exams you're considering and look through the problems on each exam. The practice exams are not too expensive, and you're going to need one of them anyway. Look at the problems on each practice exam. If one of the exams has more problems you think you could solve without even studying, or problems that seem familiar and you think you could handle with a little refresher, then that exam will most likely be a better fit for you. If the majority of the problems on a practice exam are completely unfamiliar or out of your comfort zone, then that's an exam that would be more challenging for you. Ultimately, only you can determine the right exam for you. Hopefully this video has helped you make that determination and set you on the path to success. I know from many years of experience that, with the right amount of effort and a good plan of study, all three of these exams can be passed. 
I talk more about my strategies for preparing for the exam and for solving problems on exam day in my mechanical exam strategy video, part two, so make sure to check that out. These strategies are at the core of our DTC PE exam reviews. I invite you to learn more about our mechanical PE exam reviews at our website, drtomsclassroom.com. We're ready to help you on your journey to becoming a professional engineer, and we'd love to hear how this video has helped you. You'll find lots more videos on my YouTube channel, including sample lessons from our reviews and videos on fundamental mechanical engineering topics. If you'd like to see more videos like this as they become available, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to hear more from Dr. Tom's Classroom, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Thank you for watching. As always, it has been a pleasure.